Hey guys, Monochrome here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a class of bug out tools that I just don't see being described or talked about very often on YouTube. Now, I'm not talking about tools that you would keep in your bug out bag. I'm not talking about your primary fix blade, your backup knife, which ideally is another fixed blade. I'm not talking about your multi-tool with preferably a saw feature on it. I'm not talking about the compact, somewhat large folding saw that's in your bug out bag, all of those items very useful. I'm talking about a class of tools which are too big, too heavy, too long, maybe even too wide to fit into your bug out bag, but nonetheless would still be extremely useful and handy in a bug out situation. And these are the types of tools which you would keep in the back of your vehicle. Now, let's be practical. If the vehicle you plan on using during a bug out situation is a truck with a full length bed. You have more options than the individual who has to rely on his daily commuter vehicle, such as a small economy hatchback where the back seats don't even fold completely flat. And an example of a tool or bug out tool that you would keep in your vehicle would be a full length or maybe a very slightly compact shovel that you could use if your vehicle gets stuck in the mud to help dig it out. Now, yes, you can use a very compact entrancing tool but if your vehicle is stuck in the mud, last thing you want to do is get down on your hands and knees with an entrancing tool and dig yourself out. You're definitely better off using a full-size shovel or a slightly compact shovel. And if you can keep something like that, in the back of your vehicle, hey, fantastic. Bugging out is already going to be hard and stressful enough without making it even more difficult on yourself. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a tool that obviously is not too long for a bug out bag, but oh boy, is it ever heavy? This is a substantial tool. This is made by Stanley. It's their Fat Max 10 inch demolition wrench. That's how Stanley describes this tool. Their Fat Max 10 inch demolition wrench. And compared to my large sized hand, you can see how impressive that wrench feature really is. It is adjustable. You get a small flat striking surface here. I'd say it's about the um, size of what you can expect on a small ball peen hammer. And on this end, you have your pry bar nail puller. So you've got four tools in one. This is definitely heavy duty and heavy. So would something like this be useful to keep in the back of your vehicle? Well, if you can get a bunch of tools that would be useful in a bug out situation and have them all in one, 
you're going to be able to save money, you're going to be able to save weight, you're going to be able to save room than if you bought all four of these tools separately or three of them separately as you usually get a nail puller feature on most pry bars. Now I'll be honest with you guys I bought this simply to add to my pry bar collection. Yes, I do have a collection of pry bars. Maybe one day in the future I'll show them off on my channel. We'll see. But I also figured, well, this could come in handy. The problem with a hybrid tool like this one, and this has been my general experience with most hybrid tools I've encountered. They, they just don't work. Well, they work, they just don't work very well because when you put a bunch of different tools in one and you're trying to use one of those tools, usually the other one gets in the way. I'll give you guys an example right now on this tool. There's the pry bar feature. Let's say you need to pry open a stuck door or pry open a crate or a box. Okay, normally you've got your pry tool, you've got your handle, varying lengths, maybe it's more than 10 inches, maybe less. So you grab it here, you grab it by the end, go in, pry it up. 10 inches, definitely plenty of room to use two hands. Here's the problem though. The wrench is on the other end. Now, it's not too bad if you use heavy duty work gloves. But even then, it's like, how do you grip this? You've got one hand here on the body, and you've got your other hand here. And it's like, seriously, this is not even remotely comfortable. Trying to grip this, you're not going to get a good, solid grip. You're going to get a grip, but it's going to be painful, awkward. It's not going to be solid. So it's actually interfering with the use of this tool for prying or pulling up a nail. Now thankfully when you're using it as a wrench the pry bar feature doesn't get in the way. That's because there's not much of a bend to the pry bar as you can see. So that unfortunately also limits its use as a pry bar. I mean, there's no other way to say it. They, uh, that bend really isn't as good as it should be to really get plenty of leverage with this particular tool. At least that's my opinion. But yeah, at least the pry bar feature won't interfere with this tool being used as a wrench and it is adjustable and clearly the wrench feature is the one that Stanley is favoring because check out that striking surface yeah that that's just too small let's be realistic if you want the striking surface of a small ball peen hammer, okay, y you've got it, but yeah, that, no. If you need a mallet or a hammer, uh, that's just, that's just too small, and quite frankly, it is a little bit awkward to use. Not completely awkward, but a little bit. So, Unfortunately, like most hybrid tools I've encountered, 
I can't recommend this one. Sorry guys. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.